Are you ready to take your first steps towards financial freedom by investing in property? Whether you're a first-time investor or you started your portfolio but need some help continuing to grow, 2022 REB Buyers Agent of the Year and Rising Star finalist Lachlan Vidler and his team at Atlas Property Group are here to help. As experts in property investment, Lachlan and his team are ready to help you take your next step in growing your portfolio. By completing the research, sourcing and negotiations, Lachlan goes the extra mile to find you a high-performing investment property. Visit atlaspropertygroup.com.au to book in your discovery call absolutely free of charge. This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. G'day, how you going? Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show. Hope you're well. We're getting back stuck into the Smart Property Investment Portfolio after what was, um, and if you remember, the the last sort of big deep dive I did into this was about a year or so ago when uh, my frustrations around the interest rates were paying led me to an exercise where I spent a couple of weeks fighting literally with the banks around the rates I was paying. I was able to negotiate largely every single property, the interest rate connected with every property, down to what I deemed was close enough to being competitive, that it wasn't worth moving the mortgage. So what I'm talking about there, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it's calling out your bank saying, hey, you're giving new customers X, I've been with you for Y, why aren't you giving me the same rate as new customers? And you'll have this this argument around the cost of money and how they certain rates are only available for new customers, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going around and around in circles with these mob, these banks until you finally get someone that you can put a bit of pressure on and negotiate your rates down. So you go back and listen to those podcasts um, on Smart Property Investment dot uh, com today year on the property investment podcast now when you get a sense for it all and you'll see sometimes a bit of frustration from my side some banks and I th- think back to it uh, were pretty good uh, were able to move really really quickly and I, I I cite Macquarie Bank there one phone call repricing of all my rates down to a a tight position that I was comfortable with which made refinancing it unnecessary some of the other banks uh, a little bit more frustrating uh, waiting. Uh, for hours on end to speak to someone and phones dropping out. And uh, there I would cite one particularly large bank who just posted massive profits. Um, it has a logo which is green. Oh, sorry, it has a logo which is yellow and black. So you know who I'm talking about there. Go back, tune in, you'll get a feel for it. So that was a big body of work for me over that period of time. But we're now in a very different market cycle where interest rates aren't or are not anymore at all times lows where they bottomed out at uh, 0.1% where you're able to sort of haggle pretty hard on this stuff. They're going up, so it's a very different market. So where I am right now is uh, trying to negotiate on rates. I'll give it a crack, but it's going to be hard. So I'm going to start a process of refinancing a lot of our loans, uh, resetting from principal interest into interest only, getting a five-year period back just to try and hold the line from a cash position as we navigate this inflationary period as rates go up. So I just really wanted to reconnect you all with that, where we're going with it, how we're seeing the world with the smart property investment portfolio, because it is very popular in many ways. A lot of people are introduced to property by following the smart property investment portfolio, and we haven't bought anything for a little while, well, quite some time actually, inside that portfolio. So we're going to have a chat about that today, what we're going to do, whether we need to do anything, what we should be looking at, but it all starts... Uh, with the portfolio position from a cash position and whether or not the debt we have on it is right for now. So I'm going to bring a whole bunch of people into the studio over the the coming six months as we go down this pathway. Our mortgage broker, uh, we're using Finney Mortgages, finney.com.au to help with that work. They've started that process. Maybe even get some of the lenders in who are going to finance some of this stuff. We're chatting uh, with them. I'm going to bring my accountant in uh, to give a sense for how it's all going to look from a portfolio point of view, but the first person I've decided to invite into the portfolio, whether that makes him the most important person or not, uh, is Steve Waters, who was the buyer's agent behind uh, the formation of this portfolio, who worked with us over a period of many years, building up the asset base inside of it. Um, I brought him in. We're going to pick it apart and sort of give us a, a base level from which to start this conversation and this process, this project to reinvigor the portfolio, particularly from a finance point of view. But what do we do? Is it time to start buying again? Who knows? Question mark. Steve Waters, Director of Right Property Group. How are you going? 
Yeah, I'm going really well. Thanks, Phil. And I, I just want to go back to the beginning of your conversation and how subtle you were around a particular green, uh, sorry, yellow logoed mm. bank. And you know what? It's it's very, it's historical with that particular lender. And I would suggest that it, probably three quarters of our clients who uh, use that particular lender have the same, yeah. the but, same trouble. If anyone hasn't worked it out, we're talking about the Commonwealth Bank. Com- <laughs> yeah, all complaints at one eight hundred Phil. One eight hundred complaints. Um, but it's oh, but, but, you know, but it's customer point, loyalty, right? And, customer loyalty, yeah. and and I um I wasn't happy with the process, and you know I recorded on air. You know, I, I remember I once stood on on hold for an hour and a half, and then the phone just dropped out, and I did it again the next day, and it happened again. Do you know and, what I remember that like it was yesterday because that was a Friday evening, and yeah. you rang me after the phone dropped out, and. You know, it gave me your thoughts. A few expletives, wasn't it? <laughs> the situation at that point in time. What, what I can't get around, and look, there's, there's, there's arguments for and against this, right, is when they go, well, a new customer gets this rate, but a loyal customer gets that rate, and that rate is a lot worse than this rate. Mm. Um, and they'll be saying, well, you know, they're going to, this is how they attract business and do all this sort of stuff, right? But um, uh, anyway, I, I'm, funnily enough, and I'll, uh, hats off to the Commonwealth Bank for doing it. They followed up my complaints and they went to their sort of dispute resolution hotline. They took it pretty seriously. They took my feedback on board in relation just to customer service bit. Like, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to beat up the discussion around trying to negotiate on rates. They're a bank. They're there to make money. Like, I'm happy to have a nice, robust discussion around that and negotiate. You know, and that's fine. That's that's business. It's part of doing business in um, in real estate. And I, I I don't have an issue with that at all. It's how. To do it, you it was know, ha- having to wait handled. an hour and a half, multiple yeah. times, and I'd always go, I'd always do it at the end of the day where I'll sort of piss off about someone else, and I go, I need to have a bit of a fight, so I'll go and pick a fight with the Commonwealth Bank, and I'll I'll call up at like four o'clock, right, um, because that's normally when I get some time to myself, and and I'm on hold to five thirty. And then you might get hold of someone. All they want to do is go home. They're, they're, they're trying to get off the phone going, oh, well, you know, we can't do that today. It's a sign off at 6 o'clock. And yeah. the Commonwealth Bank will probably say that's not the case. But anyway, this is why if is. you're a property investor, deal well, with it. Jeez, I see, see how easily you were agitated just then. It went, yeah, it's like a bit of PTSD. Maybe, maybe it is. It's, um, uh, and I'm sure the banks, uh, the, well, they should take responsibility around that because I know there's a lot of, and myself, I, I find it quite amusing personally and uh, I get stuck into it, but it can be very stressful for a lot of people. And I think sometimes the banks don't actually appreciate the uh, some of the, um, the the stress they do put Australian investors, particularly in environments where rates are going up. Well, even not even just investors, but even the homeowner as mm. such. And it's amazing how many people don't know what they don't know and what is actually possible should you ask? You know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Mm. Even though you ask many times and got nothing. I ask, always ask. But it's especially in today's environment where clearly rates are up. Uh, but the variable rate for the lucky people that qualify, the big four are fighting each other to get that new business. Yep. But to your point, not necessarily trying to keep existing business. Now well, they so- may they may argue <laughs> that point and say, well, you know, our numbers say X, Y, and Z. But you yeah. only need to go into the interweb and see the complaints and see the the narrative around different lenders and what they would like to do. Mm. But it all comes back to qualifying, I guess, and getting in front or getting into a position to be able to do that. And even more so being ahead of the curve and being proactive about the situation rather than reactive because often the horse is bolted. Yeah, and to be fair to the Commonwealth Bank, they're a bank, they're in the business of making money and you saw their results recently. You finally gave a spike in their share price um, and as a shareholder of Commonwealth Bank shares- I was about shares, to say, yeah, me too. I was about to say, yeah, what's not about As thing? a shareholder of Commonwealth <laughs> Bank shares, like, I get it from that point of view and, and their argument will be, well, it costs us a lot of money to secure a, a, a client, so therefore they need to make money of that client moving forward. But it's probably part of their business plan that they know it's hard- for most people, it's hard and it's a massive pain to switch your lenders or switch your mortgages. So they take a little bit of that into consideration. That said, though, if you're not looking at your mortgages right now in this market and you're not questioning and you're not speaking to your mortgage broker around it, you're probably going to blow some dough. So they're buying tip, tip of the week. Don't blow the dough. Don't blow your dough. <laughs> yeah. Don't blow Look, your dough. I, but. And, and I get what you're saying around you know, they've got a – a responsibility to the shareholder to make mm. money, and they made some pretty good money. There are some lenders out there, and I won't mention them for legal reasons. Years ago, I was invited to a lunch, 
and I went to that lunch and there were some heavy hitters in that lunch from that lender and their words to me were, we rely upon the majority of stupidity mm. for people not to question. That means yeah. not to negotiate, not to go elsewhere, not to do anything because the majority of people don't. They don't and I'm happy as part of my civic duty is if I'm talking about this stuff, saying to people, it's okay and you should be doing it to call out your bank going, yeah, I'm not too happy about my mortgage rate at the moment. It's going up. Do you want to keep me as a customer? Yes or no, Mr. Bank? Yes, mm. you do. Well, I can go to this place right now with exactly the same product and be paying this interest rate. If you give me the same interest rate, I'm happy to stick around. Mm. If you're not, I might move. Make the choice. And here's the problem for people like you and mm. me and, and other investors is how do we quantify the time involved and the cost of that time to – do everything that's required to go elsewhere. Yeah. And therein lies the problem because they know that as well. They know that. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's priced in, right? It is. So, it is. Um, so the, I don't know what the term you use, the stupidity thing. You know, That wasn't for, my words. That was theirs. Someone else's. But mm. for, for, I guess, property investors, you've got a large portfolio, got a large portfolio, where you just go, oh, I, just can't, it's, I just can't be bothered. I just can't be bothered. I might be able to save myself, I don't know, 1000 bucks a year. Like, that's a lot of money, $1,000. No, but, I'm that person. Yeah. I, I, like I will You'll spend fight the, it. You'll I'll fight, fight it. it because it's not just the physicality of the dollar saved. Mm. It's also what it does in an overall picture to serviceability yeah. moving forward. I don't, I, I'm just that person. and I am that guy, but I sometimes struggle finding the time to do it. Mm. And it'll just be moments in time where it just and, – and That's you, all you, it is. It's yeah, a moment and, in time. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and we're just a couple of property investors at the moment having a yarn about our portfolios. We're just doing it as hundreds of thousands of people listening to us talk yeah, about it. Having a whinge and a rant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> having a bit of a crack at it. But by the way, thank you, Banks, for making mortgage financing available to guys like me and Steve so we can go about – our wealth creation journey. I don't want to give the CBA a hard time. I think CBA is a, it's a good bank. It does a great job. I sometimes get frustrated with you. Um, You're just trying but, to protect your share price now. <laughs> but but like, like most relationships, Steve, they're not always uh, all singing and dancing. Uh, you know, we sometimes go in different directions for a little while, the Commonwealth Bank, but I always come back. Um, and if there's anyone from the Commonwealth Bank tuning into this, I'm sure there is. Uh, Come and have a yarn with you. Let us know what you're up to and uh, and how you're serving Australian investors. I'll make that uh, opportunity available to you, and I get a lot of uh, enjoyment about doing that as well. So oh, that's a, uh, that was just the most textbook pat pat smack or smack <laughs> pat pat, whichever way you want to look at is it. Is that what it is? That was well done. But you know, I'd, I'd happily speak to the to the guys and girls over the Commonwealth Bank. Come and have a chat if they wanted to listen. Talk about mortgages. Correct. And then look, to be fair to them, they're not the only lender that does that. And it, it, it is a revolving door. And, and what I mean by that is a lender will open and close their doors based on what the book value is. And, and that and is so a on. really, really good point. So you'll see when, when you go to your mortgage broker and they say, ha ha, there's a bank over here who has some really, really sharp rates. They're obviously out there trying to find new customers. So what happens is that a bank will get to a point and they go, yeah, we're right at the moment. There's sort of prudential regulations around how they lend money. And sometimes they might go to a particular you know, um, cohort of, of investors and they go, yeah, we don't want any more of that business. We're sort of capped out there because we can't lend them anymore or they might want more owner-occupier mortgages rather than investment mortgages. So you you see in how they present themselves to the market about whether they're open to business or not. You only need to look at their advertising. If you see the Commonwealth Bank on TV or the Westpac Bank on TV talking about we love rescue helicopters, right? They're, they're still keeping their brand in the market, but they're not actively out there trying to, to win mortgage work on the other side, when you see the Westpac advert coming out saying, we have this rate in the market at X and it's available to these people, you know you know they're out there looking for business and every lender does it. And the moral to this story is when particular lenders open their doors that is in line with your scenario, you should run through that door mm. because it'll close very, 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 very And very they'll quickly. probably be, and when they start getting applications, which ideally connected with the type of business they're trying to win... Guess what happens with your application through the process? They're probably going to move a little bit faster than other applications with business that they don't necessarily want. Yeah. And to be fair, you're self-employed and mm. you've got some complexities around there. So it's not all their fault. No. It's uh, You're not a Mr. Oh, and Mrs. it's incumbent on, on the borrower, myself, to make sure that but, but what I put in front of them is clean. Correct. It is. And it yeah, was and, and it, it is. is. But yeah. it, you're not, you're not uh, you know, ABC 123 simple. No. And- it's an 80-20 rule, I guess, like everything. And they want some simplicity. And when they get the people that are too complex, whoever mm. the lender is, they'll shut that door. And I guess that that brings us full circle to you know, the, the portfolio. The and portfolio, where Some is of that? the complexities that it's 
potentially facing or we've left behind mm. over the last couple of months, circa six months. We've addressed the rates, uh, although that's now coming for a full revolution again, which needs yeah. to be recalibrated. But then we've got the income side of things, which I feel we've left behind a little bit. Yeah, and and um, we'll, we'll have a chat about it because this is important. And essentially, I want a baseline where we are with this portfolio moment to, to set us on this this program of uh, rethinking it and re-engineering it, um, both from an asset point of view, but also from a, a mortgage point of view. And and myself and Steve know each other pretty well, and, and we sort of chat quite often. Normally, it's a Friday Arvo. We'd normally call each other and just go, what's going on? What's happening? And we'll have a bit of a whinge about something that's- uh, It's not always whinging. No, no, sometimes <laughs> we're super positive. We're always positive about property, but um, so that happens. Um uh, so Steve knows the portfolio really well, um, but let's chat about what's next for the portfolio outside of uh, just the financing point of view. Let's go to a quick break. Uh, stay with us, everyone. Back in a moment. Ever wondered how you can invest like the top 1% of Australian property investors? Henderson Advocacy has been at the forefront of helping everyday Aussies improve their financial freedom. So if you're a savvy investor or someone just starting out on their property journey, give Henderson Advocacy a call today. Head to www.henderson.com.au. Don't invest alone. Invest smarter. Uh, welcome back, everyone. It's Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show with Steve Waters from the Right Property Group, chatting through the Smart Property Investment Portfolio. Now, for our listeners who might not know about this, we kicked this portfolio off about 10 years ago, buying up stuff in the western suburbs of Sydney, uh, back when it was a great time to be buying stuff in the western suburbs of Sydney. And by stuff, we mean houses and units, pretty diversified in, with assets uh, in Campbelltown. I'll talk, talk about sort of a wider geographic areas, Campbelltown, Penrith, Blacktown, sort of Blacktown Council, Penrith Council, Campbelltown Council, other assets uh, in New South Wales, up around Hornsby Way as well. So a good little portfolio. We also have uh, assets up in Brisbane, both uh, apartments or apartment block, apartments, townhouses, and also freestanding homes. So Victoria? Uh, Victoria as well. So we had 17 properties. Had. So we were also down in Wollongong as well. That's true. Yeah, 17 properties, 18 doors, but – we sold a property earlier this year, Steve, another property which was in Central Coast. So we sold that, uh, I think, probably about a month after we should have to really capitalise on the uptick in value there. But that was a property in Berkeley Vale. We haven't really gone too much into details. We, we sort of spoke about it at the point in time. Worthwhile doing that money's now sitting in an offset account, just just keeping mortgages tight and you know money for a rainy day that we can deploy in time. We'll talk about what we're going to do in the portfolio moving forward. But the portfolio, in essence, is negatively geared, uh, and one of the reasons why it's negatively geared uh, is that uh, some of the um, the structure we hold, we hold it in trusts, and we pay land tax on everything that's in it. Uh, by the way, I did a really good podcast on uh, Queensland land tax uh, recently, which I'm sure you're across all this. Mm-hmm. So tune into that. It was with uh, Tony Greco, who is sort of senior technical. Uh, executive over at the Institute of Public Accounts, and this is where they're going to start aggregating your entire exposure to the property market in Australia to work out how much land tax you pay in. Ironically, ironically, your entities, uh, which were from a cash point of view, a bit of a negative, mm. but you know that wasn't necessary. Uh, you might not be as badly hurt than others. Than others, because of that very same reason. Some of the scenarios we spoke about was, pff, God, like is a. There's some hurt coming for Aussie investors if you have Queensland property. Oh, I did the number. It's a it's tens of thousands of yeah. difference for me personally. Mm. Uh, and as a side note to that, there, there's a couple of organisations, you know, that we are in, involved in, or you have been involved mm. in, being PIPA, Property Investment Professionals of Australia, and PICA, uh, the investors community, that are lobbying uh, state government. Yeah. Very, very hard, as long as as well as the REIQ and a few other organisations, because it it is absolute just soapbox moment, absolute short sightedness, madness. Well, there's people questioning whether it's constitutional what they've done. I have done that, yeah. And I think if you own, or if you potentially want to own any property anywhere in Australia, so for the listeners who may be just educating themselves at the moment, or those that have properties. There will come a time very soon 
where you need to get behind this mm. because in large numbers, we have a good voice. Yeah. It is su- – this is suicidal for the state government, for Queensland state government. Yeah. I um, – Tony, I, I tried to pull Tony in to give him some more colourful co- coverage around it, but he was he's very considered. He's very, very diplomatic. Guy, yeah, very, yeah. Diplomat, very good at what he does. He just gave me the facts is what a good operator like that does. But, uh, you know, and this is important because it talks about – we're talking about the, the cash position of the, the smart property investment Correct. portfolio. We, we it's been expensive to hold that because we've held it inside of trust and therefore Queensland, for example, or in New South Wales, you get no land tax uh, thresholds in, inside of trust. In Queensland, you used to be able to build up to a particular point in each trust and have-, have Start um, again. And then start again, start mm. again. You know, all that's going to change. And, and that's sort of held back the cash position for the smart property investment portfolio over, over many years. And, and by memory, like its worst position, it was costing us about, I don't know, three to 4,000 bucks per property per year. Mm-hmm in a negative position. When you add that up over 17 properties, it's, it adds it's, up. it's a fair bit of chunk change, right? You can go and buy a new car with it, right? And then as that property portfolio has become a lot more mature, a lot of the interest-only mortgages have moved to P&I. So there's, we're paying money off the principal, which I'm sort of okay with, right? You know, So that therefore means that you know, it's absolutely negative a year. But you take away all bits and bobs and stuff and look at it. It's a healthy portfolio and it's served us well over time. Heaps of equity growth and, and we'll go into that a little bit more. But back to the Queensland point of view, Steve, when I did the podcast, I was going, like, what are, what are these what are these people inside of government thinking? You know, they want to accelerate Queensland as an attractive state for people to operate within. Now, I think maybe because, and it's not political, but maybe the, 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 the political leanings or philosophy of that government, I think they would be arguing, saying, well, if we don't have property investors up here or less property investors up here, that means there's going to be more property available for owner-occupiers so they can build their their homes here and their dreams and their lives and all this stuff, which I sort of get, right? So let's disincentivize property investors mm. from being up here. That might work, right? Property investors pay a lot of tax, right? Whether it's you know at purchase or holding the property. So if you got less property investors in there, your tax receipts are going to be considerably dropped, and also you're going to really reduce the transactions that take place, and you make a lot of money out of that. Indirectly, indirectly, the integration from the real estate, mm. let's call it industry, via investors into any state is huge. All the way from the state-based tax stamp duties all the way down to the delivery guy delivering the carpet to the carpet layer who's going to put carpet or paint or whatever it may be, um, property management. It is just, I can't even find the right words for it that I could say in a public arena mm. without being offensive. It's just ridiculous. You're just going to stifle economic growth, Queensland, is what you're doing. Um, sorry just as they've got back on their knee, just, uh, back on their feet, I should yeah. say, from – the effects of COVID and even before that with low jobs over the last 10 years Mm. and the multiple floods they've had and the tourism in, like just... I don't think they're going to be able to stop it because I I think they were able to lobby it to try and get it stalled until next financial year, all this stuff. Or it's effective now for next financial year when you pay Mm. your land tax, but I don't know. Here's the worst case scenario, Phil, is that it works for them. Yeah. And the other states... Go, ha ha. Go, huh. Yeah. Yeah, well done, Queensland. Not a bad concept. I personally don't think it will work for them. No. And is it constitutional? That's to be argued. But is it going to be something similar to when Labor abolished you know, the gearing mm. back in the day and then there's a, a revert? I don't know. I don't think any, any of us really know. But what I do know is it's something that is serious and people should yeah. should really... In fact, as in what, what are the repercussions of this? Queensland's off my buying list now. Yeah, oh, well, it is. It look it, it. I reckon you could probably deploy your money better without the risk connected with it or the uncertainty from it. And it's not even grandfather. This they're just going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Know, that was the it's, biggest it's, thing. That that point there that it wasn't grandfathered yeah. was. And by the, grandfather, we're meaning they're not saying okay, anything up up and that happened up to now, we're not going to worry about. It's moving forward. The game. Yeah. No, nah, let's go look back in time. That was the most, I guess, other than the actual. Uh, fact of it all, that was the most astonishing thing for me mm. that it wasn't. Anyway, it. Um, but let's. Go. How does that affect the cash flow in your portfolio? Yeah. Eh, that's yet to be seen, really. Yeah. But and that is a obviously that'll have a it's an annual effect, which you could break that down into to weekly, daily, monthly, whichever way you cook the books. But the more instant effect is on the income that it derives now. 
Well, do you know one of the, the biggest impacts of this, and I'll t- tell you, Stephen, you know this, but um, you know, for our friends up in Queensland who are probably tuning into this, it's getting more expensive to live in Australia because of inflationary pressures. Now, who do you think is going to wear the increased cost of holding property in Queensland other than the property investor? Mm. Mr. It, tenant. Correct. And that's a really un- – already, they're already – in the midst and of a crisis, yeah. this will compound it worse. Mm. Yeah, there probably will be a flatline period, but then it'll compound into something greater than what we're experiencing yeah. or they're experiencing already. I'm not really sure that the boffins within state government there have thought this through. I really don't. Oh, they're probably sitting there thinking, hey, the uh, Commonwealth Games are around the corner. We're going to be making plenty of money because people are going to be developing Queensland irrespective of this because of all this great stuff that's going on. I don't know. It could be something that um, fundamentally changes the shape of of the livability and investability of of Queensland. Who knows? Outside of my pay grade to make those calls. But um, Mm. uh, it's good to hear, though, that uh, uh, there are certain groups who are officially lobbying uh, this. And whether it falls on deaf ears, who knows? Uh, Let's admit through the COVID experience, uh, most of the states were happy to operate in isolation in sometimes draconian type of uh, environment. So, you know what? They're probably going, yeah, people are used to hard decisions. So if we're going to do it, let's do it right now and uh, and shake things up. But, but the point being, Steve, is that the smart property investment portfolio is negatively geared, mm-hmm. but not to a point where it's an issue. It's one mm-hmm. of those cost of doing business type things. And, and you got to remember, there's always a pre-tax and a post-tax component to any portfolio and your accountant can work through that. We sort of spoke about uh, my accountant coming on uh, Munzeru Khan to have a bit of a yarn around how all this is going to work as well. But you mentioned, Steve, around the income part of the portfolio. Uh, so this is what we really need to break down, something we need to probably work on as part of this this review. So myself and Steve are going through a process now and collecting all the information, putting it into a big spreadsheet. We've got a formal uh, portfolio review coming up. And, and one of the key things is going to be whether or not my rents are market. Uh, so let's just go into that really, really quickly. I was going to another break. Stay with us. Back in a moment. It's time to get help. Interest rates are increasing. Inflation has hit an extraordinary 5.1% and the chance to secure a golden egg property is getting narrower by the day. Dragon from Buyers Agency Australia has been presenting the facts and helping property investors make smarter, well-informed, educated decisions in property for years. So what are you waiting for? Get in touch with Dragon today at www.buyersagencyaustralia.com.au. Invest with integrity. Welcome back. Phil Tarrant from Smart Property Investment with Steve Waters. Now, Steve, you reckon, you reckon... Uh, I reckon. You reckon. I'm waiting for this. What, am I, what, do, I, what do I reckon? <laughs> you reckon that most of my rents are undercooked and out of market. I do. I had, had a guess, circa 20,000. That's a lot of bananas. It's a lot of bananas. Yeah. It, uh, some will be greater than others. Mm. Um, the, the interesting part will be is whether you have missed the boat. Yeah. I've missed the opportunity to push them up. Correct. Now, there's, yeah. a, there's a few reasons other than the, once again, the physicality, as I refer to it, of the cash flow coming in. And I've talked about this many a time. I think if you strip the the actual reasons why you're wanting to increase rent, which is the cash flow. I, I don't want to increase rents because, you know, I want to charge people more rent. I want to, I just want to offset some of the costs I hold in the portfolio. Correct. And it's a, if you can pass them on, you should within mm. a, ethically. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And you know, if there are people that really can't, well, I'm sure we could absorb a few dollars here or there and keep rents below market mm. rent. However, there, I believe, and this is just a big an assumption by me, but I, I'll back it. I think if you don't go to market rent or thereabouts, mm. you will miss the mark and the opportunity to do so for potentially – 12 to 24 months. I don't know when that will happen. And what I'm referring to here is I think there will be state legislative changes to or against or for landlords and the ability to put up rents because of the crisis that Australia is going through at the moment. Like generally we're 0.9 now. Yeah. And we know that other some areas within that are much lower, you know, mm. 0.2s, 0.3s. Now, You're has it been- you rates. Yeah, there. correct. Yeah. Has it been tabled around these changes? No. Is it being spoken about? Absolutely. So what are you talking about? Make hay while you can. And the point- Well, it's not even that because that gives a, 
There's, a, there's some sort of um, underlying yeah, sort of correct. negative it's, intent yeah, around that. It's, yeah, it's not. It's just a. It, this is a commercial enterprise. Yeah, and you need to clearly treat it as a commercial enterprise. It's it's tough, right? And and census data come out recently, and and you would have picked through it like myself, Steve. And and one of the the key things I've taken from it, and it's been well narrated across the media, is um, your average Australian property investor isn't what most people think the average. Australian property investor is. They're mum and dads, like me, just trying to get by, make a few bucks to plan for a, a retirement. The, the perception by some, some. areas of the Australian uh, community uh, who are renters think that property investors are hyper wealthy. All property investors are hyper wealthy people sailing around on their yachts on weekends, living large, drinking fancy champagne, eating oysters and caviar every day. Sounds familiar, doesn't it, Steve? It does. Um, that's not what census data shows. So, for there to be state-based intervention around moratoriums on increasing rents because of inflationary pressures, what we need to remember is that the Australian government is highly invested in Australian property. You have um, – they've got skin in the game. Right? Absolutely. And, and they're they highly, highly – Physically, incentiv- they've got skin in the game. And they're yeah. highly incentivized to making sure that there is an, – and this goes to the point around – uh, sustaining the value of Australian property, it'd be very hard for a government to get re-elected if there was an inherent collapse of the Australian property market. And there would also be fiscal ramifications for Australia should that to take place because of its level of investment inside of it. And then you put that into a state-based point of view, a wholesale collapse of the Australian property market state-based would be dire to the state-based treasuries and their ability to generate revenue to in continue to the good work that they do. So this is why investing in property ain't a bad play, right? But getting stuck in there and and saying to investors, you can't increase, everything else is going up, milk, bread, steel, I don't know what you, Bundaberg rum. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But there's one thing that's not going to go up, there's not one thing, and that's going to be rents. Now, can't put up rents. Can't put up oh, rates. I don't think they'll get to you. Cannot put them up, but mm. they'll cap it. And once again, I'm only having a big guess and a, you know a big thumb suck. I it could be you can only put it up at CPI or times two. Or, well, CPI is huge at the moment. Or yeah, but not to where like I guarantee you some of your properties and yeah you know, for that reason some of mine are mm. well mm. below. Well, they're not keeping up with CPI. I'll tell you what, there's some of my rents are going backwards. Yeah, some places out in the western suburbs yeah. of Sydney. Bel- yeah, that's going, a good oh, point. There's one place. Um, in Mount Druitt, two bedroom apartment, good apartment. Uh, just had my property manager online saying, "Yeah, that the best equivalent rents for the same or similar property is two hundred seventy five bucks a week for it." Right? Yeah. Yeah. You and I, have, you and I, have Mate, spoken about this. I, I bought this place ten years ago. It was three hundred and ten dollars rent when I bought it. Now, a lot of this is to do with um, supply and demand, and uh, typically. The upwards pressure put on rents in those areas of Sydney is, is normally through migrant uh, population uh, who who aren't coming to Australia right now. But you reckon that's out of market? I do. I I actually, I really do. And this comes down to right components, people, mm. advice. Now, it doesn't mean uh, sometimes the wrong advice doesn't mean they're a bad person, but it just means that their locality may not be specialisation. Yeah, maybe. correct. It, um, but. I coming back to the to potentially some of these changes, I think that, and I'm once again I'm only having a guess whether it's capped at CPI or two times or you know you can't increase the rent uh, more than once in two years. No double double jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or you know two years rental increases or you know because we're we're starting to see some of the softer changes you know uh, without grounds mm. leave. Yeah, you can't punt someone. Um, yeah, yeah, pets. Yeah, in some of the in some of these cases, I actually agree with it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, there's a not that there's a whole world of hurt. There's just a bit more regulation now, which is quite ironic because as investors and Phil, when you were on the board of Pippa as well mm. with us um, before I was asked to leave. Yeah, well, that was just because of your ethics. It, <laughs> <laughs> no I joke, but Pippa's it's about regulation, like regulate yeah. the industry. Well, here's just a different version, mm. I guess, not the one we wanted yeah. uh, in terms of state or federal intervention. But I believe, and I, yeah, twenty k circa um, across the entire portfolio is where the cash flow is. All right, all right. Steve's put it out there, so that's good. So we've got a baseline now. With it. These are just sentiments at the moment before we've really looked. Yeah, I could under, be wrong. I hope before, I'm wrong. Before we've looked under the hood and, and had a look at it. So it's nice to 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 have this chat, Steve, and and um, 
I think we need to put a mark in. We need you back within a month for us to do this this portfolio review and then we'll come on air and, and chat it through. So I okay. uh, watch this space, um, committing myself to a body of work that I need to do and I like to set myself deadlines because it's the only way stuff gets done. And if you're wired like I am, uh, set yourself deadlines around it because there's a bit of hurt money there at the moment uh, mm. and I reckon I can make that go away with a bit of uh, hard work, focus, energy and effort. The intent is there, absolutely, but it needs to be prioritised up the other stuff that I've got to get done. Steve, what do you got? Oh, I'm just doing a quick search. You're smirking. On, I am. Yeah. I'm just doing as yeah, just around that. Um, All right, we'll do this and um, uh, watch this pace. So uh, I'll get Munzer Khan on my accountant. Um, I'll get uh, our mortgage broker in Finney Mortgages, Finney.com.au. They're going to come and do all the the heavy lifting around that. I've already spoken to them. The start of the process. They're waiting on documents uh, from me, uh, and uh, and then we can have the fun bit about what do we do next with it all. I'm what do we for, buy? I'm what do we buy? To that. Where do we buy? How do we do it? Well, we may not What's buy anything. On? We might not. No. Might sit idle. But um, uh, Steve Waters uh, from the Right Property Group, we'll get him back in. I uh, hope you enjoy that, everyone. You can go on. There's plenty of stuff around our portfolio. Uh, Steve's shaking his head, reckon I'm out of market, I reckon. Right, anyway. Just a quick search. Yeah. Smart Property HQ, social media where you'll find us. Hey, quick one, favour for me, please, uh, if you're tuning into this. Keep those reviews coming uh, on um, iTunes, wherever you choose to listen to this. The team get a real kick out of it. It's just not myself here having a yarn behind the mic. Um, really capable team that do all the heavy lifting, make us sound good on this. So uh, if you can uh, leave us a review, uh, five stars, if that's what you think we're due. That'd be really handy. See you next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. It's safe to say the property market has been red hot over the last few years, with some of the markets we've selected in 2021 rising over 40% in a 12-month period. It's very likely that if you're a property owner, your property has gone up 20% minimum in value in the past 12 months, and you have most likely accrued sizable equity that can be recycled and extracted to build your investment portfolio. With interest rates increasing, You might be wondering where to invest to maximise capital growth and cash flow in 2022 and beyond. Well, to save you time, energy and guesswork, award-winning author and regular guest on the Smart Property Investment podcast, Paul Glossop and his team at Pure Property Investment have outlined the top 30 affordable suburbs poised for strong capital growth over the next few years with sound cash flow. Grab your free Top 30 Guide to Property Investment Guide today at purepropertyinvestment.com.